The world didn't end in 2012, at least not last I checked, but if you were a fan of Japanese boys' high school volleyball at the time, things were certainly looking dire. For years, the number of students participating in volleyball clubs across the country had been shrinking, and that year alone, the sport lost a good 5% of its remaining players. But in 2013, a funny thing happened. For the first time in ages, more players joined the game than graduated out of it. The year after that, even more came in, and in 2015, enrollment began to skyrocket. Two events precipitated these surges in interest. The first occurred on February 20th, 2012, when Haruichi Furudate's volleyball manga Haikyuu began serialization in Weekly Shonen Jump. The second came on April 6, 2014, when Production IG and Susumu Mitsunaka's adaptation of the series began airing on MBS. Shonen Jump has played home to a lot of popular, successful, and influential franchises in its many years of publication, but few have had such a measurable and immediate impact on the real world. Haikyuu is entertaining and engaging like all great manga, anime, and Garfield-shaped pizza delivery apps are, but it's also inspiring, motivating, in that very specific way that makes you want to get up off the couch and go for a run as soon as you're done watching it. I can personally attest to that power. Haikyuu came a little late for me to join any high school volleyball teams without ending up on a prison one, but watching it, and also Baby Steps, did push me to start hitting the gym regularly for the first time in my life. Those shows also kickstarted my love for sports anime in general, though few I've watched since have come anywhere near the high bar they set. If you've seen or read Haikyuu, then you know it's one of the greats, and you're probably just waiting for me to start gushing about it, but if you haven't, especially if you're one of those nerdy type otaku who thinks sports ball stuff just isn't for you, you may be wondering what exactly is so great about it. Today I'm going to answer that question, in the hopes it might inspire a few of you stragglers to hop aboard one of anime's hypest currently running hype trains before it reaches its rapidly approaching final destination. If any of what I'm about to say piques your interest, then you should know that Haikyuu is available to stream in its entirety via today's sponsor, Crunchyroll, where you can watch the latest and greatest anime simulcast in English and other languages the same day they air in Japan. Stick around to the end to hear more. Many a great shonen manga is built on a great shonen rivalry. When two talented characters are continually driven to surpass one another, it makes for great drama and often gives the story a sense of forward momentum by creating a natural incentive for both to rapidly improve. Rivalries are often the relationships in anime that we remember most and ship the hardest a lot of the time, and Haikyuu kicks off by introducing us to one of the absolute best in anime or manga. On one end of that rivalry, we have our protagonist, Hinata Shoyo, who is, yes, yet another can-do shonen hero of the loud, spiky, orange variety, but he's a very, very good one of those, maybe second best after Emma. Hinata is energetic, irrepressibly cheerful, and naturally naturally athletic. He's also short, so volleyball was just another sport to him until one day, by chance, he happened to catch a glimpse of the National Interhigh Tournament on television and saw another shorty, the little giant of Karasuno High School, dominating the competition with his insane vertical leap. That image stuck in young Hinata's mind, and from that moment forward, he was determined to stand on and fly over that same court wearing the same colors as his new idol. He trains relentlessly through all of junior high, despite being the only member of the boys' volleyball club at his school, eventually recruiting enough friends to take a shot at a tournament, which goes about as well as you'd expect for total amateurs doing that. Worse! even, because their first match is against a powerhouse school favored to win the whole thing, whose setter, Tobio Kageyama, is a certified genius known as the King of the Court, a nickname that other schools find intimidating, even though his own teammates originally came up with it to mock him and his pompous, demanding attitude. Kageyama, you see, is a perfectionist, which is great for him. 
Through a singular focus on volleyball, he's developed impeccable game sense and an uncanny ability to get the ball exactly where it needs to be to score a point when it needs to be there. Unfortunately, that's not always where the spikers on his team are, and instead of adjusting his own play to better suit them, Kageyama tends to go off. Because of this tension on the other team and his own raw athletic ability and drive to win, Hinata is able to steal a few points off of these powerhouse players, and even when the first and only game of his middle school career predictably ends in crushing defeat, Hinata refuses to give up. Singling out Kageyama as his rival, he vows to face him on the court once more and defeat him in the high school league. A plan that might have even worked if they didn't both end up at Karasuno. Luckily for both of them, once they find a way to see past their differences, they actually make a pretty great team. Hinata, having only ever played one real match before now, is a bit lacking in technical skills, but he makes up for it with speed, stamina, and raw athleticism, traits which Kageyama is able to weaponize quite effectively. By shooting the ball directly at Hinata's blindly swinging hand, Kageyama can use him to deliver a devastating quick spike attack from almost anywhere on the court, a skill that lands both first years on their team's starting lineup. Hinata's happy to be able to stand on the court at all, but he's not content with being Kageyama's lackey. He dreams of being Karasuno's ace, like the little giant before him, and over the course of the series, he works hard to sharpen his skills and take control of the ball instead of simply channeling it from the setter to his chosen target. As Hinata improves, so does Kageyama, learning to trust and understand his teammates and adjust his sets to better suit their individual abilities and playing styles instead of simply demanding they get on his level. Which is a huge challenge for him, though not because he's the callous jerk his old team made him out to be. Rather, he's just not all that good at reading or talking to other people. Not unlike another famous Kageyama, ya boy Shiro T. Poison. Tobio Kageyama has less of a handle on his temper than Shigio does at first, but he works just as hard to improve. Like Mob, he's able to go the distance because he surrounds himself with friends who like him for who he is, whose talents make up for his deficiencies, and whose positive attitudes encourage him to better himself at every opportunity. And that, I think, is the real brilliance of Haikyuu, because that dynamic of friendly rivalry doesn't just exist between Hinata and Kageyama. Their drive to improve themselves and win pushes all of their teammates to do the same, and vice versa. Only six players from their team of 12 can ever stand on the court at once, so each one must give their all and do everything they can to earn their place in that lineup. Next to such ambitious kids, anyone who doesn't get their button gear won't be doing much with it besides warming up the bench for them. For instance, Tsukishima, a blonde, bespectacled first year, blessed with a lanky frame and cursed with a bad attitude, who avoids effort for fear of failure, learns the value of hard work by seeing the puny Hinata overcome his height advantage with pure grit. His friend, Yamaguchi, not wanting to be left behind, eventually hones a skill of his own into a powerful weapon for the team. Daichi and Sugawara, the third-year captain and backup setter, do their best to be good role models to their underclassmen and keep their antics in line. The second-year wing spiker, Ryo Tanaka, is a brash punk who has a lot in common with the loud and boisterous Hinata, but he also revels in finally being a senpai and works hard to be a good older brother figure alongside Suga and Daichi's mom and dad. There's one more loud, excitable second year, the team's libero, Nishinoya, who's definitely watched a little too much anime for his own good and likes to name his special moves, but he's good enough on defense to warrant that. When first introduced, Nishinoya is pissed at the team's third year ace, Asahi, who's close to giving up after, in his eyes, failing the team the previous year. Hinata and Kageyama pester him until he returns, though, and ultimately Asahi regains confidence in his killer spike and makes amends with Nishinoya. These upperclassmen do their best to support their juniors, but they also see the hunger in those young eyes, and they won't let the kids surpass them without a fight. They butt heads and compete, 
pushing each other during the series' lengthy and satisfying training arcs, but when they finally hit the court in a proper game, they all come together and support each other in order to win. That dynamic largely works because Hinata is bold and straightforward, always saying what he means and cutting through the bullshit, creating tension between his teammates. Or, to put it another way, he's really stupid and doesn't know or care when he's running his mouth. But it does work, because most of his teammates are idiots too. Especially the quiet genius Kageyama, who really seems like he'd be a smarter character, but is more or less completely helpless when it comes to anything but volleyball. And as exciting as it is to see Karasuno fight to win, it's often just as fun, in a different way, to simply sit back and watch these idiots be idiots. You come to know and absolutely love this motley crew of morons as they fight their way to both victory and defeat, and you also get to know their supporters, like big sisterly manager Kyoko, her adorable replacement in training Yachi, and the team's other mom and dad, club advisor Takeda-sensei, and team coach Ukai. Everyone in Karasuno, even the three substitute second years, Enoshita, Kenoshita, and Narita, are treated like valuable members of the team and given their own character arc to follow. But all of that's just the tip of the iceberg as far as character writing in this series goes, because, of course, Karasuno isn't the only team in the league. In every tournament, they play against equally well-realized characters, at least six on each side of the net in any given game, but often more, all of whom have their own volleyball-related dreams that they've struggled just as hard as our heroes to achieve. In each game and the training arcs that precede them, we see these teams interact with each other and with Karasuno, getting to know some just as well as we know our heroes. As the series goes on, it builds up a complicated web of inter-team friendships and individual rivalries, and all of this means that in the hypest, most climactic matches, where our heroes really give their all to win by the skin of their teeth, Sweet victory often comes with a bitter aftertaste, as some of the strongest characters in shonen anime history have their dreams crushed right before our eyes. This more or less equally weighted character development also lends a feeling of uncertainty and tension to each and every major match, since by the end we always know that the players on the other side of the net have done just as much to earn the win as Karasuno has, and indeed Hinata and co. do lose some very important games unexpectedly, something that only pushes them to further improve. Now, it's not particularly unusual for a shonen manga series to have a wide range of fan-favorite characters. It is a naturally character-driven genre, after all. But what's truly remarkable about Haikyuu is just how many members of its cast are viable faves. Take a look at the series' popularity polls, and you'll see that while a few real good boys do get more love than the rest, there's a fairly even distribution of major and minor characters across every team basically all the way down. Also, you have to go down to 31st place on the most recent poll to find a character with less than a thousand votes to their name. While the manga and anime move at a fairly brisk pace, Furudate is a master at characterizing these players through the few lines they get, or sometimes through little skits that play out in the background of other scenes. Hardcore Haikyuu fans can tell you something unique and memorable about basically anyone in this series with a name and face. Furudate makes each team memorable by giving them a clear, unifying theme. Some, like Karasuno's crows, are patterned after animals, like the cats of Tokyo-based Nekoma, who serve as their primary rivals, and the eagles of Shiratorizawa, the top team in their home prefecture of Miyagi. Others follow broader concepts, like the Iron Wall of Date Tech, a school full of stone-faced, tall, tough boys, or Alba Josai, where many of Kageyama's ex-middle school teammates went, which is framed as a court of knights supporting their king, Toru Oikawa. Oikawa comes off as a haughty pretty boy, which he definitely is, but he's also a big dumb loser with a bit of an inflated ego, and his teammates super know it, constantly busting his balls to make sure his talent never goes to his head. He and his best friend, Iwaizumi, have been training since they were kids to go to nationals together, and as third years, this is their last chance to make that dream a reality before they end up playing on opposite sides of the net. 
I am very tempted to just start going down a list of characters and rattling off reasons why they're great, but with so many good ones, I honestly don't think I could fit all that into one video. So let's leave what I've said about Oikawa as it for now. You'll just have to trust me when I say that watching all of the character interactions in this show is always entertaining and fresh, no matter who's on screen. Haikyuu spends a lot of its time in training arcs, nearly as much as is spent in actual games, and thanks to the strength of these characters, it never feels like a drag. Those training arcs are really important, too, because they show the incredible moves our heroes pull off on the court are the product of hard work, successes earned through repeated failure and gradual improvement, not inborn talents that they just have because they're anime protagonists. And that goes for Karasuno's rivals as well, since they're often shown training together. Haikyuu digs into the mechanics and strategy of real-world volleyball with the same level of detail other shonen series apply to their crazy magic power systems, making for complex, believable matches that only get more technical as Hinata and his teammates train and come to better understand the sport. In the beginning, matches are fun, simple, and fast, but by the end of the second season, you'll build up a comprehensive understanding of how the game is played and what it really takes to win. That would be thrilling enough if all we saw were the matches, but the training arcs make those thrills feel accessible. Like, you could feel the way Yamaguchi does when he serves, or Nishinoya does pulling off his rolling thunder, or the whole team does when their skills synergize perfectly and a plan comes together, if only you put in the same hours they do. And I think that's why Haikyuu has managed to inspire so many kids across Japan to take up volleyball. It's not just that everything these characters do is within the bounds of human ability, something you definitely can't say for every sports anime out there, but also that we see a wide range of different characters doing it. Not every player is always on like Hinata or in the zone like Kageyama. Others like Tsukishima kind of take it easy sometimes, conserving their energy for really important moments. And it's the mix of different personalities and the different kinds of effort these characters put in that results in victory for all of them. Haikyuu is very, very good at sending the message that Volleyball is hecka fun and anyone can play it if they want to. Of course, that pitch wouldn't work nearly as well as it does in anime form if Production IG, under the direction of Susumu Mitsunaka in the first three seasons and Masako Sato in the currently airing fourth one, didn't make the sport look so goddamn intense and beautiful all the time. Haikyuu's animation is consistently incredible. Using exaggerated motions and a dramatic, heavily inked art style, the series captures not just how it feels to watch volleyball, but how it feels to play it. The impact of the ball against flesh, the whoosh of a perfect spike as it zips past your ear and slams into the court, the soaring sensation when Hinata takes off from the ground, you feel that viscerally through every frame of Sakuga, and there's a hell of a lot of Sakuga in this show. Dynamic cinematography and a rocking OST amplify the hell out of that excitement, and the show's artists often play up the animalistic elements of its character designs, particularly their eyes, to make the action feel more raw and primal. I think this is best exemplified in how Hinata is made to look like a bird taking flight when he leaps, and how his big, glassy eyes look like they're scanning an open field for prey when he aims his spikes, but you'll see it at play in pretty much every money shot in the series. Each of those unique teams and each of the distinct players on them has their own aura about them on the court, their own style of defense, their own manner of attacking that's reflected in how they're animated, generally tied to the same themes used to define their characters. So even though they're hitting the same kind of ball over the same kind of net on top of the same kind of floorboards over and over and over, no two matches or even sets ever feel the same. Shonen battle anime are an easy sell for a lot of us weebs. It's not hard to comprehend why dudes shooting lasers out of their hands and swinging around big transforming swords is cool. I know that real world sports can seem a bit underwhelming next to that, but if you're not a sports anime fan, trust me when I say that Haikyuu's best battles, and yes, there really is no better word to describe them, are every bit as exciting and awesome as any of the fights I've covered on Anime Lay. 
The only thing that stopped me from covering Haikyuu in the same way, honestly, is that all of its best battles are pretty long and involve a lot of characters doing a lot of things. Like, one of the matches is literally an entire season of the show, and I really think I'd need to work my way up to writing about that. But you know, Haikyuu is exactly the kind of show that fills me with the motivation to take on a big, intimidating project like that. On top of having great characters, a strong, unpredictable storyline, and jaw-dropping action scenes, this anime possesses a rare power to inspire. It may not make you want to play volleyball specifically, but I don't think it's possible to walk away from an episode of this show without feeling like you need to go out and do something. Smile Down the Runway, which I talked about earlier this week, has a similar quality to it, and I'd also recommend that to any fellow creatives looking for inspiration. But Haikyuu's physicality gives it a bit of an edge as a universal motivator, I think. Especially if you're a nerdy type like me who's maybe a little worried about your health. If you're looking for a push to work out, just watch an episode or two on the treadmill and you'll be running marathons before you know it. Production IG and Crunchyroll make no guarantees that Haikyuu will have you running marathons or provide any health benefits whatsoever. Side effects of Haikyuu may include uncontrollable vibrating, sudden bursts of movement accompanied by shouting, and an ever-increasing desire to protect all these good boys' smiles no matter what. Do not take Haikyuu if you are lame or hate fun. Seriously though, Haikyuu is phenomenal, hands down one of the best things Shonen Jump has ever published and Production IG has ever animated, and I say that knowing full well just how lofty those claims are. There's a reason this series has inspired so many kids, there's a reason it's gotten so many otaku like me who previously turned up their noses at the sports genre in general to embrace it wholeheartedly. And if you haven't seen it for yourself yet, I hope I've gotten at least a little bit of that reason across to you today. As I said at the top, this video was brought to you by Crunchyroll, the premium anime streaming service where you can watch Haikyuu, My Hero Academia, Demon Slayer, Black Clover, The Promised Neverland, and plenty of other Shonen Jump mega hits along with hundreds upon hundreds of other great anime spanning every genre and topic you can think of. Crunchyroll's simulcasting service lets you keep up with the latest and greatest shows fresh out of Japan, and their platform is built by Otaku for Otaku to make the anime viewing experience as smooth as possible. You can browse their massive library by genre, by season, or alphabetically if you're a psychopath, and their already handy queue feature just got a little handier as it's now sorted by what you've watched most recently instead of the order in which you originally queued shows up. Head to Crunchyroll.com slash basement to begin your 14-day free trial of Crunchyroll Premium and start binging Haikyuu along with plenty of other incredible anime today. Before you go, let me know in the comments below which team and character in Haikyuu are your favorite and why. And while you're down there, I sure would appreciate it if you could hit those like and subscribe buttons, assuming that you want to do that because they really do help the channel out a lot. I'm Jeff Thu, professional shitbag, signing out from my mother's basement.